the radio. In uh, 1953, they upgraded a little bit and made it a little bit more powerful. Uh, this one is uh, this one's about eight watts. It consists of. Let's see, this is the transmitter. This whole piece here. This is the receiver. This is the filter system. And this is the power supply. And what's neat about this power supply is this cord went into it was adjustable for different kinds of plugins. Now, the way I've got the prongs turned right now, it will fit US plugs. But if you rotate the prongs, like that, they spread out for you. They go for a wider plug of some type, probably a 220 plug. Because this thing would run on volts, voltage from 70 volts all the way up to 270 volts. You just set your power supply for whatever voltage you thought you were going to be running on. And you ran on that, or there are battery clips in it, and you can hook it into a battery. It would run off a battery, or a hand crank generator. If you had a hand crank generator, basically, you could run it off of anything. The way this thing worked was, you had to uh, get this together while I stop thinking about it a minute. in there like that. Or if I shake it in, it'll plug like I want it to. Okay, and this one plugged, uh, do, 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 do. see, the power supply plugged in here like this. And this one plugged, how to plug for it. Sitting down here on the end of the yeah. crystal set. This plugged in here. Filters plugged in here. Here. Is it right here on the end of that pair of the brick there? No, that's a different thing. Uh, oh, here it is. Had to hunt for it. Anyway, it plugged over here like this, and then this one plugged like this. Now, the interesting thing about this little transmitter, it has a built-in CW kit. It is a little tiny key that folds into the end of it. And CW with it, over. You have the time, and you are in a secure enough location. You need the J37 leg key, which snaps over your leg just like that, so it has a place to cut hold it. And uh, these are also called bomber keys. Uh, radio men on B17s and B24s use these that snapped over the leg of their flight suit. And, uh, when you use it with this, it has a key jack here, but the way this is rigged up, you only push it in about halfway because this was set up for a, some type of electric cue that would, you could have a message pre-taped and it would send it. So you use it like that, and then you could use the pull side here if you're not comfortable with a little, little tiny make leave here. And then you had the headphones. Now these headphones are kind of funky looking because I made them out of what I had on them. Uh, I used to have a set of these, God only knows what went on over the years, but uh, anyway, they have a, these were common in the World War II types, they had the little metal plug in the end of them, and uh, you made them in the, yeah, I heard phones a minute here. They're, uh, oddly enough, they're still finding sets of these in uh, homes in Europe. 
uh, that people have, uh, when people have passed away or whatever, uh, their relatives and people going through their effects and they'll find these even in attics and basements. And that's the first time they knew that Grandpa or Uncle Jack was uh, a state right. man agent. But it, anyway, it looks like that. It's plug in the world. Because that's the only way you can listen to it. There's no speaker system. So you have to use the headphones. Uh, I said it puts out a watt and a half and uses a long wire antenna. If you have access to an antenna system, yeah, you can make up an adapter and hook it into that. But for the most part, they recommended a hundred foot wire. You just hooked up a hundred foot of wire to it and uh, I don't actually have it with me, but there are instructions online on how to uh, load it transmitter up so it will uh, broadcast to the, uh, so you can load up the wire, whatever length it is. This will do, uh, it'll do 20 meters, 10 meters. Uh, it's on the upper end of the 10 meter band. And uh, let's see here. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the uh, 20 meter band. So it'll actually do four bands. The other ones would only do two bands. These will do four bands. And uh, typical QRP rigs, weather conditions, you're out and do hundreds of miles. It's, they ain't gonna get out there. It's amazing what a little tiny bit of power will get you to do when you're running. Uh, the fellow that gave this to me said that he had made European hard backs with it. Now, when you actually have these hooked together, there is a wire that goes between the transmitter and the, uh, the receiver. And what that is, it's just uh, an antenna connection. And if you want to listen to what you're sending, then there's a wire that you hook into this one, and it hooks back in over here. There's a place on it, uh, it says ground here, but over here it's uh, it's monitor. And you hook it into that, and you can hear what you're sending through your headphones. Oh, you hear with me, I like, kind of like that because I'm still kind of new to CW, so I like to be able to hear what I'm saying. Because it's, uh, if not, it gets a little, I'm out to make mistakes with it. But uh, that's pretty much it. Like I said, nobody really knows who made these. The thing about it is that uh, these were ordered destroyed by the CIA in the uh, early 60s. And the Air Force had gotten some of them. And they, uh, Estimate that the Air Force probably had as many as 1,200 of them. So this may be one of the Air Force units. There's no way to know for sure because there's no markings on it at all. There's no manufacturer's marks. There's no, you know, operation service on it or who owned it. It's just blank cases. And as I said, there's guesswork as to who actually built them, but nobody knows for sure. These are R2 rigs. They're populated with sub-miniature tubes. The little tubes are just about, you know, not hard as long as the end of your little finger. A little tiny thing. So, they were never meant for long periods of use, so you know, you just, you see, well, with something like this, you wouldn't be using it a lot anyway. You just hook it up, you'd send a quick message, and you'd shut it down. You didn't want to be traced. So, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Uh, there are uh, videos online of uh, a guy using one. Uh, it's very interesting to watch. He shows how to load it up and uh, transmit with it. Uh, there are some on eBay. I've seen a couple of them on there for sale at prices that will scare parking lot owners will scare the crap out of them. Uh, and they actually sell. But uh, this one, I'm, I'm gonna hold it onto this one with both hands because it's got a neat history that I, you know, Father well, gave it to me as a real friend of mine. He's a dear friend. And it's just one of those little things that it's a once in a lifetime thing you can tickle the depth that you got. It. So that's pretty much what I know about this. Um, I'll try to answer any questions if anybody's got any. There is a collector's organization.